Here they're asking you to sketch a graph of the first derivative based upon the given f of x graph. So the first thing you're going to have to do when you hit these types of problems is always make sure you know which graph it is you're looking at. Sometimes they'll start you with the derivative graph, sometimes it's the original graph. So the first thing you always want to make sure you know is what your graph is. So our graph is of f of x, the original function. And what they're asking us to do is they want us to sketch a graph of the derivative. So when you go to sketch a graph of the derivative, I use what I call my derivative triangle. The derivative is all about the slope of the graph. Remember, derivatives are slopes. So if my graph is headed up and increasing, that's a positive slope and therefore a positive derivative. If my graph is headed down and decreasing, that's a negative slope and a negative derivative. And if your graph just sort of goes horizontal for a second, that's going to be a zero slope and a zero derivative. So when I look through these problems, the first thing that I do is I run through the whole thing and I just kind of say, okay, positive, negative, or zero. So looking at our original graph, we would say the graph is headed up. We go positive, positive, positive through this whole section here. We get to the top. That's when it's going to go horizontal for a second. So that's going to be a zero right there. And then after that, the graph is headed down. It's going down. So the slope is negative, 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 negative. Again, we get to that horizontal at the bottom, that zero right there. And then after that, we are headed up and going positive, 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 positive from there on forward. So sometimes they want us to sketch the graph on top of the original graph. I think that'll be pretty confusing to read. So we're just going to graph, sketch a graph of the derivative down here, um, not on top of the actual graph. The first thing that I do whenever I'm going to sketch the graph of the derivative is I look for these horizontal points. These are your critical values is another way that they refer to them. And so the cool thing about those critical values is you know where those are at. Because when we come to our sketch of our derivative down below here, doing our derivative graph, we're only caring about positive, negative, and zero. So positive, again, would be where it's increasing. Negative would be where it's decreasing. And then the zeros, those critical values, those are going to be right on the actual x-axis because the slope value is zero there. So they're the easiest point to mark. So at negative two, I know my slope is zero. So the first thing I do is come down and at negative two, I'm going to put a dot at zero. I also know that at x equals two, I have a slope of zero. So I go ahead and I mark that. I know for sure where that's going to go. It's going to be marked right there. So at two, the slope is zero. Now what we do is we just kind of look to the left and look to the right. So as I look to the left of zero over here, I know that I'm up in the positive space because that graph is all increasing. To help yourself get around this, sort of remind yourself that you're starting at a big slope. You're starting at something steep here. I might say something like m equals 15. Give yourself a random number to work with, a really steep slope. So you know you're going to be starting up top here. And then as I move down my graph towards zero, that slope is just getting smaller and smaller. So maybe up near zero, my slope is one. That's going to be a flat slope. So I start steep and I get flat. And so my sketch is going to do the same thing. I start somewhere steep and I move into the flat until I hit my zero that I knew had to be there. Now we're going to play the same thing between our two zeros. This is all negative slopes. Those are all decreasing sections. So I'm going to go into the negative. This time I'm starting at an m equals 1. I'm starting somewhere flat, someplace close to 0. It gets steep. The steepest it's going to get somewhere in the middle there. Give yourself a random number. It's not as steep as the other stuff, maybe like a 10. And then again, it flattens out as we get towards our other zero. So we're going to go flat again. We're looking at an m equals negative 1. So negative 10, negative 1. So we're going to start flat in the negative, and we get steeper. So we start flat. 
we get steep and then somewhere in the middle there it turns around and starts going back towards flat so somewhere it goes flat then it gets steep then we get flat again coming in there now we're done with that section and we look to the right of our zero and so we are looking at this section so again we're starting somewhere flat an m equals one and we're heading to a steep area so an m that's equal to 15. so we start flat and we go steep so our graph is going to look something like that not the prettiest looking graph but you know once you sketch it you can come back through and make it look nicer if you want to so you know looking at it now you could say okay now that i know what i'm doing and know what i'm looking at my graph might look something more like this for my derivative graph so der graphing derivatives it is all about this derivative triangle Label your graph positive wherever it's going up and increasing, negative wherever it's going down and decreasing, and then zero wherever you get those critical values, wherever it goes horizontal. Those happen at peaks, they happen at valleys, and they also happen when this thing just goes sideways for a second. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, please click that like button and subscribe. And also share it with your friends and anyone else you know who might be crying about an upcoming AP Calc test. You can find more videos from me, more sample AP Calc questions, and my complete AP Calc study guide over at my website, apcalcprep.com. Have a great one.